So to, to find one that comes in polystyrene, and this is excellent, <laughs> this is excellent polystyrene. I'm even thrashing myself off over polystyrene, but this is... Retro Unboxing. Hello viewers, uh, welcome welcome back to the uh, to the channel. Um, oh, Jesus. Right, so well Hello viewers, welcome back to the channel. I'm Jonathan. Thanks very much for watching. As you'll probably notice, I have the largest gaming related box, uh, retro gaming related box in the world ever. Uh, it is the uh, Commodore Amiga CD TV. Now this has literally just arrived on my doorstep. I bought it on eBay uh, over the weekend. I paid a ridiculous amount of money. I'm not going to tell you how much I paid but frankly if you wanted to look on eBay at the uh, sold prices and all that kind of stuff you'd probably get a fair idea. So this is the first time of me looking at it. This is completely uh, live, uh, you know. So um, the box is, is a little bit tatty, as you've probably already noticed. Uh, but this is just the outer. This is just the outer sleeve, and then there is also an outer box, from what I can tell. Uh, and then there are inner boxes, which from the eBay listing looked uh, in much better condition. So uh, I'm just going to show you around. The, the, frankly, there's, there's not really so there's a, there's a little bit of information on here about what's in here. It's basically everything you can see there apart from the monitor. Um, so the CD TV itself, the keyboard, the little controller thing, and the uh, the, the three and a half inch floppy drive, and some other some other stuff. Uh, and then on the back, ugh, holy shit. There's some other stuff which I can't really talk you through because I can barely see it and uh, and, and kind of point to it at the same time but there's, there's a load of information on here. So I'm just going to kind of leave that on screen for a few moments and let you uh, let you have a look and then uh, I'll, I'll also add in um, some, some, some more close-ups and such on the uh, on the final video. So I'm not entirely sure how to go about this because this is such a large a large thing but I think what I'm going to do is just try and yeah slide this I mean genuinely I, I, this is 100% genuinely the first time I've I've, I've looked at this uh, it's literally just arrived I've literally just dragged it up the stairs put it onto my table and now um, you are seeing it first time live with me I actually I also, I also don't know if it works, because the the guy that I bought it off of said that um, everything seems to be there, and he plugged it in and powered it on, but he gave it the old I don't have the right TV cable to connect it to uh, to a modern TV. So, um, in all honesty, it might not work. But just to be clear, so I've already been prattling on for a little bit. Um, I'm only going to unbox it in this video, and then I'm going to do a second part to this uh, where I, I get it set up and see if it works. So this is just going to be an unboxing and, and look at what's in here, because I'm conscious they're going to be quite long videos. So I'm going to shut up and start trying to... Just put that down there. It smells of loft. The guy that I bought it off did tell me that he uh, found it in loft, thinks it's been in there for the best part of 30 years, which sounds about right. Uh, right, what do we have? I'm going to drag a few bits out and walk through those.
load of discs in here. CDs in those little plastic ordinary things. Well, I can tell you the box for the CD TV itself looks pretty good. So that's good news. I want to leave that till last. Uh, yeah, you'll have to excuse me. Yeah, I have just probably been exposing my arse to the camera and all that sort of stuff. I'm bending over and doing that kind of business. So, um, well, there's a lot of stuff in here. Uh, oh, that's the keyboard. So, uh, discs, three and a half inch floppies, basically Amiga games, uh, and these were probably just Amiga 500 games. And uh, and these, in theory, should all work on the CD TV. If you're watching this, I'm I'm sure you're fully aware that the CD TV is basically uh, an Amiga 500 with a kind of uh, CD drive built in and all that kind of stuff. So um, these are just Amiga games. We've got the workbench workbench disc. So these are all 1.3 or 1.33. Uh, a few more floppies, they're all just, well mostly, copied games. Turrican 2, which I will absolutely be testing. I haven't seen a CD TV in real life since, well since they came out, so very early 90s, there was a, a store in my local town of Alfreton, Alfreton, Derbyshire, DE55, called Gordon Harwoods, and they were a bit of a bit of a trailblazer kind of uh, store. They had Apple Macs, they had a lot of Commodore Amiga stuff. If you you know you ever wanted to see like an Amiga 4000 uh, in the in the wild, you could go to Gordon Harwoods and they'd had everything laid out. It's now a motorbike shop, which is you know good for motorbikists, but uh, not so much for uh, computer enthusiasts. So we've got a. You know, we've got more floppies. Sorry, sorry about all this noise and and whatnot. Uh, more floppies. Test drive. A copy of Workbench. Monkey Island. Another world. Jimmy White Snooker. Excellent. I'm just gonna just pop all of those out of the way behind me, and then we've got a few CD discs. Now, I'll probably have a bang. Uh, I'll probably have a look at this one. This is "Welcome to the CD TV." Now, I, I've never seen one of these um, kind of disc caddy things. I'll have to work out how it works, but it looks like a giant floppy disc. This is here to protect the CD from scratches and all that kind of stuff, but I can blatantly see shitloads of scratches on the actual CD. Uh, yeah, the camera may well pick some of this up, I'm not sure. But I will see if it works. I think that must be where it opens, no? Yes, all right, pinch those two bits down and that opens. So that's probably why the CD itself scratched because it's not sort of lived its life really in the um, in the caddy. It's probably just lived its life being kicked around or whatever, and and then it just needs to go into the caddy to be played. So I said right, yeah, because obviously the CDs will just live in the in the normal CD case. Now I'm not entirely sure. I'm too fussed about uh, Cinderella. I'm de definitely not too fussed about uh, karaoke. Well, it's got blue suede shoes on it, so maybe I'll have a crack at that. Uh, and then some sort of painting app, but it looks very much geared towards children. Uh, there's the welcome one. And then we've got All Dogs Go to Heaven, which again looks very much geared towards children, uh, of which I am not. Do also have I'm over there. Do also have a few little books. 
So what kind of surprises me is that you, you do just get an Amiga 500 manual. Now, someone out there with a CDTV might be able to confirm to me whether that is actually just the manual that comes with the CDTV or whether there's something missing, uh, i.e. a CDTV manual. Um, and then just a couple of other, couple of other little uh, workbench type it's all text uh, manuals and then I'm, I'm mastering the Amiga this came with Amiga computing magazine and uh, and it's mostly text so I'll whack all that over there out of the way Paperboy Amiga Amiga computers with at least 512 Paperboy 2 uh, so this is just a floppy so what I'm probably going to do uh, between now and the second part of this video will be to pick up some actual CDTV software, I think, because um, there's not much point messing around with floppy. There's no point in buying a CDTV and then messing around with floppy disks, if we're being honest. So I'm going to do that. What's in this box? Ooh. controller. I've never touched never touched one of these. That looks in decent condition. I'd say very good condition. A little bit of uh, bit of finger cheese on the D-pad. But it, all in all that's not not awful. A bit of a uh, bit of cleaning up with a, a toothbrush. I'm sure it will oh, look, I'm trying to snap it. I'm sure a bit of cleaning up will uh, get it looking pretty bang on. That's awkward. Right, so that just takes a couple of AA batteries, so that's very good news because oh, I have AA <laughs> batteries lying around. What an awkward design. Right. So, so this is quite pleasing. The the guy that's just delivered it, he actually hand delivered it, and and I know he, he, so. When I bought it, it was located in Slough and the postage cost was like £17, which was perfectly acceptable. Um, but then he contacted me after the auction and said, do you mind if I bring it up to you and deliver it? And I said, of course not. No, that's that's great. Thank you. So, um, and he's, he's come from Slough. And uh, and although, I, you know, I clearly, I, I'm not going to, well, yeah, I can't really show it on screen, but the, uh, the there is a, uh, an envelope here that's delivered to an address in Slough. And this has got some leaflets and pamphlets and all of that kind of stuff. So uh, there's the instruction manual there. Aha! Right, this is for the, CD, uh, for the external three and a half inch disk drive. So I'm just gonna pop that with that. There we have a proper sort of manual for the uh, actual CDTV which is good. So there's some instructions on how to connect it up and such. So that's useful. We also have a receipt or a sales a sales invoice from Comet who no longer exist. Again, I just need to be a little bit careful about how I show this on camera because there are addresses on here. Um, but essentially this is a, a printed invoice and the, I'm gonna try and just cover that up with my fingers and show you the rest. So this was purchased in 1993 in Slough and Again, my my understanding is that this was purchased by the um, the owner that I have just bought it off of, Mr. Sean Doughty, and uh, and he's owned it since. That's great. Just a nice little bit of uh, what's the word? Provenance. I think I've, I'm sure I've used the word provenance before, but um, nice nice bit of provenance there. 
Compact Disc Interactive CDTV Plus Keyboard. Purchase price £499.99. pence. Not quite half what I paid for it. No, more than half. Anyway. Uh, so this is actually an insurance certificate as well. So they've given it five a five-year insurance kind of warranty. Lasting up until 1998. Date of issue, 11th of August 1993. That's awesome. I love that. Then uh, a grotty envelope. Um, something else. More Comet receipts. I really can't make this out to be fair. This looks like just a kind of uh, repeated receipt of the um, of the invoice there. Uh, another manual for the disk drive. Now this is cool. This is just a booklet with a load of available software that's really cool just some printed off leaflets with prices from back in the day it's black and white these look like they're just photocopied from from like the pages of uh, an Amiga magazine or something. Uh, nice little quick shot joysticks uh, catalog. That's really cool. I like that. <laughs> More leaflets. How to connect it to your Hi-Fi system. Direct Mail, Staffordshire. Yeah, that rings a bell. That rings a bell. These would have advertised in, uh, you know, like Amiga format and, um, and all those magazines back in the day. So there's just, so this this would have been a, uh, a, a kind of sign up mail shop thing where they uh, they try and sell you stuff uh, via post. But there's some prices there for oh, joysticks, printers, uh, SC, S, a SCSI, well SCSI controllers. Um, a CDTV internal gen lock for uh, 150 pounds. The external hard disk drive with a massive 65 megabytes, and that would have cost you 270 pounds back in the early 90s. Uh, and then a, a zipstick joystick thingy, a leaflet thing. I definitely had, uh, I definitely had that. I've probably still got one somewhere knocking around. And then I really liked that C3 blue one with the chromey buttons, but the, the chrome on the buttons wore out. So all those sweaty little, sweaty little mitts. Uh, and then just one more little um, leaflet on connecting, connecting something. So I'm going to again just pop all of this out of the way. I'll organise it all a little bit better later on. So let's have a look at the uh, the, uh, the disk drive. Wow. So I've mentioned this quite a few times on the channel. Whenever you're buying anything old, if you find a version that came in an outer box there's a very good chance the innards and the, or the inner boxes will be in good condition. And this is one of those occasions because, frankly, if you have a look around the box for the, uh, for the disk drive, for the model 1411 disk drive, it's immaculate. So it's a good way to buy. Polystyrene is 
perfect, mostly. And the floppy drive itself. Have a look at that. A little bit of dust on it. Look at the cloth. Luckily I had a slightly damp cloth nearby. I'm not going to tell you how that got damp and why it was nearby. I'm just going to give it a little wipe. Apart from a couple of very minor scratches, now the, the damp patch, that is just an external floppy drive and it's in excellent condition. The little connector. Really impressed with that. I'm starting to kind of get a little bit um, I was worried, you know, because I'd spent a lot of money on this, and now I'm starting to just get a little bit more relaxed. That actually, you know, I'm I'm okay. This is this is not uh, this wasn't such a ridiculous decision. You know, when you're sitting on eBay late at night and and you buy these things, they feel like really good decisions at the time. And well, yeah, like I say, now it's. Um, and then this. Got another little box inside it with a ah mouse. Right, pop that there. Plastic bags can be dangerous. Beware of suffocation. There's a very good chance that a mouse or a hamster could suffocate on this bag. So beware, dangerous. So that's the mouse, right. Uh, and then the keyboard. And it's a proper bag. Jesus. We have <laughs> full size keyboard. People bought these back in the day for nothing, like just to just to be able to, to to take the black keys out of this to put in an Amiga 1200. I I, I'm trying, I think that something tells me that I did that, which is what makes me think of it. But you just you know get your knife in, wedge the thing out, and um, wedge the keys out individually, and then just swap them over. Uh, and these these are just pretty rare as is, and um, it's got a PS2 connector, so you could act. It looks like you could just use a PS2 keyboard on um, on a CD TV. I'm 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 kind of learning here. There's just a bit of crap on the um, bit of crap on the cable there. I think that's either paper or polystyrene, so that might just clean up. But the keyboard itself is in very good condition, a little bit of dust, and I, I think uh, 10 minutes of, of giving this a bit of a clean up will, um, will make it just nice. And then the mouse, that I think is very much a, oh, it's a little bit mucky. <clears throat> Some random 30 year old finger cheese. Uh, yeah, the rollers aren't too bad, but this, this is just a lot of cheese under there. Um, so yeah, I'll give this all a bit of a clean up again. That comes with a PS2 style port uh, connector. This is very much the later version of the mouse. Uh, it feels like a, a black version of the mouse that came with the like Amiga 600 and the Amiga 1200. Right, so now's the time to get the uh, CD TV out. I've genuinely only ever seen one of these. I've never touched one and uh, it would have been 30, 30 years ago.
Right then, look at that. I mean, it's one hell of a box. Uh, I suppose this, uh, this, the CD TV was designed as, as kind of um, hi-fi size. So uh, it matched up with your amplifier and your, your other CD players and uh, tuner and things like that. So um, this is a pretty, pretty big old box. And there's virtually nothing on it to show you. CD TV. There's a there's a little bit of information on the on the side there, but it's just uh, right all rights reserved for Commodore. And then on the back side, um, there's the English part, which is uh, CD TV player, remote controller with batteries, welcome disc in caddy, one year warranty, documentation, connecting cables. Now I think a lot of that was loose and out in the box over in the box, so that's already out. So um, I'm I'm a little bit disappointed about this rip here, but you know we'll have to get over that one. So we've got power cable and an aerial. So this is why you were saying. So this is why you were saying you couldn't connect it to a modern TV. It's only got the kind of uh, RFE uh, sort of aerial cable. I mean, actually, the box is very good apart from that. And and then I think the word is ta-da. Now I've been looking out for a boxed CD TV for a while, and and you see a lot come up on eBay where it's just the CD TV unit. Um, it looks scratched up and uh, and they still want a thousand pounds for it. So to, to find one that comes in polystyrene, and this is excellent, <laughs> this is excellent polystyrene. I'm even thrashing myself off over polystyrene, but this is excellent polystyrene. It's that really heavy kind of really good grade stuff. Very similar to the stuff that the uh, the new Xbox has come in, and to find this over it as well, incredible! It's really heavy. I suppose actually it's got it's power bricks internal, isn't it? So um, I'm just going to wipe that down there. Sorry. The uh, the power brick is internal because you just plug the, uh, the the kettle type connector in there. Um, so the, yeah, so the, the power supply is internal. Um, I mean, looking across the back of this already, I can see it's in excellent condition. Usually, you know, you've got years worth of sort of scratches and whatever where you're unplugging and plugging things in, but that is excellent. So uh, that's that's good news. So I didn't know about this, but the ports for the uh, mouse and keyboard are on the back, so that kind of keeps things really nice and neat. So I'm I'm liking I'm liking that. Uh, we've got the audio out left and right, so that's also really good news uh, for connecting to uh, an external sound system. Uh, on MIDI out as well, so uh, you can connect to uh, to professional audio equipment should you wish, which I don't. Connect there for the floppy disk drive, uh, serial, parallel, and then RGB video. Now it's possible that I've already got an RGB video cable. I just need to have a look through my boxes, um, and then uh, TV in uh, and and out, and then. If you wanted to just connect straight to um, a component uh, TV, you can do that from that port there. So that's excellent. Just before I show you the front, I'm just going to give this a little wipe down. Uh, say this this is in very good condition. There's a couple of little dints and whatever, no major scratches, but there's just a bit of dust. It's this plastic here that's sort of uh, got the main scratches on it, a tidy dent there, and I think that's where something sat on top of it and sort of squished it down. 
so it's possible that I can get that done out. But that, from first glance, is bloody lovely. Now all the lights are facing my way, so I can't really have a good, ah, there's quite a good scratch across the front there. I, I think overall I'm, I'm, re I'm really pleased with this. Uh, as, as a first, first impression, I think some of these scratches will probably um, kind of polish out. Well, that's excellent. Just uh, have a look around the, have a look at the bottom and the sides. So the seal is not broken, so it's never been messed with. And there's the full kind of label on the base with, uh, so it's called the CD1000. Fairly sure the camera's picking that up. Okay. So yeah. Excellent. Shame about that dent. I mean, there's virtually no rust. I mean, I'm very, very tempted at some point to uh, to pop the cover off. I don't really want to um, to break the warranty thing. This is going to be one of those that's got a clock battery as well, so um, it's it's usually worth with these things to uh, pop it open just to uh, change the clock battery. So it doesn't. Um, I'm going to assume it's already leaked uh, everywhere. Uh, this is packed in here very tightly. It's very heavy. You can see. Um, you can see boards, you can see the power power sort of uh, brick there. There's a lot of um, cables you can see internally. You should be able to see that through the through the vent there. And then it's actually got a fan, which is right next to the power unit. So that's um, that's obviously to get uh, heat away from the power brick. Ooh, what's this? Ah, okay, so we've got a flap down. A flip down port. No, it's just off. All oh, right, okay, so that'll be PCMCIA, I guess. I'll put that on off video. Play. Skip tracks up down, oh, volume, skip tracks, CD to TV, reset button, power button, headphone socket, and the eject there. That's a mechanical eject, so you've not got to rely on. Yeah. Mm. There's the remote infrared thing. Just a shame about this. Really long, sort of scuffy scratch across there. I wonder if like a bit of back to black or something would sort that out. All right, so that's kind of about it for part one, really. I um, I said at the start of the video that I, I literally the, the, it's just arrived, so I'm, I'm a little bit kind of uh, overwhelmed. Um, I'm, I'm now kind of deciding which TV to hook it up to or monitor um, and, and get testing it. So all of the testing and exploring this is going to come in video, uh, well, in, in kind of uh, video two in a, in a few days or a couple of weeks. Hopefully you've enjoyed part one. Um, I'm going to set this up kind of now, have a good play with it. I'll follow this up with part two in a, uh, in a few days. So if you want to see part two, give this video a like, give me a subscribe, and uh, I'll follow up with this one soon. But in the meantime, thanks very much for watching. And... Uh, Hopefully I'll see you on the next one. See you soon. Retro Unboxing